For the past few months, I've been working on a model rocket designed to steer itself through the air using a set of control fins. In the last video, I went over how I designed the vehicle, and today I'll be going into detail on the electronics, code, and the navigation system. To control a rocket like this, I need a flight computer that can accurately estimate orientation and position, and then use these estimates for stabilization and control. I decided to design my own printed circuit board, centered around the STM32 F405 microcontroller. I've used this chip before, and there are plenty of timers and communication interfaces which are needed to talk to the other chips on this board. This includes a magnetometer, which is essentially a digital compass, and a barometer, which is used for estimating altitude. This large package at the top is a GPS receiver with the UFL connector for an active antenna. There's also a LoRa radio module placed at the bottom of the board. This radio operates at 433 MHz and is a much longer range than the NRF24 I used on my previous rocket. However, this comes at the cost of a lower bandwidth, so I'm limiting the radio functionality to simple commands and responses as opposed to a continuous stream of telemetry. Flight data is all recorded locally on this flash memory IC. This smaller chip below the MCU is an inertial measurement unit, a small package that contains gyroscopes, which measure angular velocity, and accelerometers, which measure linear acceleration. This is perhaps the most important sensor on the board, so I spent a while looking for a suitable one. I settled on the ICM42688P from TDK and Vensense after a few things in the product description caught my eye. Firstly, the data resolution. Most affordable MEMS devices are limited to 16 bits per axis, which means that, for example, angular rates can only be measured in multiples of 0.061 degrees per second. This chip, however, can somehow provide 19 bits of gyro data, resulting in 8 times the resolution. My thinking was that this would be very useful for estimating orientation, since the numerical integration of angular rates would be more precise. The second exciting feature was the support for an external clock. This again relates to the precision of the numerical integration, as a more accurate time interval between measurements should boost orientation accuracy. So the board itself is a four-layer design with inner ground and 3.3 volt planes. It's powered by 2S LiPo with the help of a linear regulator. To get my design built, I used PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. PCBWay offers printed circuit board prototyping services, which are ideal for getting electronic designs professionally manufactured in small quantities. I typically use their standard PCB option along with the turnkey assembly service, which is where you provide a bill of materials and they'll source all of the parts and assemble them onto your boards for you. They also offer high-end 3D printing and CNC machining, which I might be making use of later in this project. If you want to make a flight computer like this, or if you have some other designs you want to get manufactured, visit pcbway.com or click the link in the video description. Okay, now we've covered the board itself, let's move on to the code. Everything is written in C in the STM32 cube IDE. I'm going to skip over all of the drivers and low-level firmware I wrote, and instead I'm going to focus on the navigation system, as it's definitely the most interesting part, and I'm always getting questions about it. So the role of the navigation system is to fuse data from all the sensors on the board to produce estimates for orientation and position. Firstly, let's go over the orientation filter. A quaternion, which is a weird 4D complex number, is used to represent orientation. Quaternions are useful because they avoid issues like gimbal lock, are more computationally efficient than rotation matrices, and allow smooth interpolation between rotations. So that's how the orientation is stored, but how's it actually estimated? I configure the IMU to take measurements about 8000 times per second, and write all the data into its internal FIFO buffer. Then, in my microcontroller's 200Hz update loop, I transfer all the data, which is usually about 40 to 50 packets. For each packet transferred, I call this procedure to adjust the quaternion to reflect the small change in orientation that occurred in the 125 microseconds since the last measurement. This alone can provide an accurate orientation estimate over short time spans, but suffers from drift due to small biases in the gyro data accumulating in the estimate. Another issue is that the orientation quaternion will only be with respect to its initial state, and it won't be aligned to any particular reference frame. This will be a problem when implementing the position filter. To overcome these issues, the accelerometer and magnetometer data are fused in this estimate. This is done by first using the accelerometer data and simple trigonometry to calculate the tilt. This is represented by Euler angles and describes which way is down, while not being subject to drift over time. This tilt is then used to align the magnetometer data so that heading can be calculated. 
Then the tilt and heading Euler angles can be converted to a quaternion and a simple slurp can be done to produce a weighted average of the orientation quaternion and the tilt heading quaternion. The average is heavily weighted towards the gyroscopes, so convergence can take a few seconds from when the computer is booted. I found this approach to be very effective, but it's worth noting that you will get best results with a calibrated magnetometer, accelerometer and gyros. Now that these additional sensors are incorporated, the quaternion represents the orientation with respect to east-north up, and it won't drift over time. So this approach works great, but there still is a problem. When the system undergoes acceleration, the tilt angles provided by the accelerometers will be incorrect. I therefore only use the fusion approach when on the pad and not undergoing acceleration, and once in the air the accelerometer and magnetometer readings are simply ignored. So that's how I estimate orientation. Now on to position. I'm using a Kármán filter to combine acceleration readings with GPS and barometric altitude. A Kármán filter is an algorithm that predicts and estimates system states based on a model of the system and observations. So my Kármán filter states are 3D position and velocity, which is packaged into this six element vector. The Kármán filter uses matrices in all of its computations, so keeping the state vector as small as possible was a priority. As a result, there is no state for acceleration, and the accelerometer readings are actually fed into the filter during the predict step. There are two update subroutines, one for GPS and one for the barometer. To actually fuse the GPS, barometric altitude and acceleration data, the reference frames need to be aligned. To get the acceleration readings in the east-north-up reference frame, the raw data aligned with the body axes can simply be transformed by the orientation quaternion. This is another reason why having an accurate orientation estimate is so important. Small errors can misalign the reference frames, which can harm the position estimate. I then just implemented all of the maths in code, which is made a lot easier by this matrix handling library I found. I used the CMSYS DSP library, which is specifically optimised and written for ARM Cortex processors like mine. Once I'd fixed the bugs, I went outside to get GPS reception and began tuning the filter. This can be quite a tricky process, but I eventually got some decent results. It's worth noting that this drift you see in the position estimate is basically unavoidable, and is due to the noise and random walk in the GPS position. You could fix this by incorporating GPS correction data from RTK or a differential setup, or by increasing the GPS variance in the filter to trust it less, but this will only work if your acceleration reading is highly calibrated. Anyway, it works well enough for me how it is. I also want to point out that a Kármán filter is not entirely necessary for estimating position and you can get quite good results from a more simple complementary filter. Here's one I wrote as an experiment. Acceleration is used to extrapolate the estimate as before and the GPS and barometer data is used to stop the position from drifting using a weighted average. Since the velocity will also accumulate errors, I hacked together some code that uses the difference between the current and previous GPS slash barometer readings to correct errors in the velocity. Now, I haven't tested this approach in flight, so I'm not too sure how it would perform in a dynamic environment, but it is so computationally lightweight that I'm going to run it in parallel with the Kármán filter in future flight tests and see how they perform. So that's about it for this video, it was quite a technical one, but I hope you found it useful. My next video, coming up shortly, will be about the launch pad for this rocket. It's a pretty crazy design, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks again to PCBWay, and thank you to my Patreon members for your continued support. Finally, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.